Hey, AME394. Uh, so I just wanted to take a second and talk for a hot minute about some of the, one of the things that I saw consistently happening in, happening in our projects. Uh, and that's dealing with uh, questions of encapsulation. So I'm going to make two containers here, and I want to look at two different situations where I'm going to um, use this parameter here, the width and the height parameter. I'm going to choose to drive them from either inside my container or from outside of my container. Uh, so let's take a look at one example here. This should look pretty familiar. So I'm going to draw a circle, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move that around a little bit. I'm going to transform that through space. And I'm going to send that to an out. So far, so good. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. There we go. And I'm just going to have it bounce up and down. That's all I want it to do. Great. And we'll use uh, a small little script here to make this work. Right, this should be the parameter that I want to change. Excellent. And I'm just going to write the expression. Uh, look for the operator called LFO1 and the channel called Chan1. And that's going to drive this thing's movement. Excellent. That's going a little too fast. So let's go ahead and use a math to scale that a little bit, right? So first of all, I think I'm going to want negative 1 to 1 to be more like negative 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. That's more like it there. And I'm going to turn the frequency down to maybe like 0 0.1. Great. And then I'm going to change my reference here. So this is look at null 1. This guy, great. All right, so now I've got this thing that kind of moves slowly up and down. Let's change that frequency up just a little bit. Excellent. All right, now, what I would like to have happen is I would like our, um, my container here, I want its resolution to control what's happening inside, right? So I'm going to go ahead and split my control panel here, and we're going to watch what that does a little bit more closely. All right. And we'll dive inside here. So I would like this circle on its common page, I want its resolution to be derived from its parent, right? The thing that's above it. And I'm, I'm using parent and child, especially in the context of if we look at the pathway, this is the file pathway to the project. This is its address in space, right? So container one, or excuse me, so circle one lives inside of container one. It's its child, right? So I'm going to ask for the operate, operator, excuse me, me, parent, so I'm asking for my parent's parameter called w, which happens to be this. And then I want my parent's parameter called height, which happens to be 300. Excellent. So now we can see that the aspect ratio is right here, is correct in our viewer, right? It looks right. And it also means that if I change the width and height of my parent, so let's say for example it's like 800 by 600, that also changes the width and height of the child, this guy here inside of it. And the reason that's important is that when I'm making something generative, right, if I'm making something that is absolutely driven um, on its own, and I don't want to have to go in and change any of the hard coding, I know that by just changing the parameters here in the top, right, these guys right here, I'm actually affecting everything inside of it. So that's one way uh, that we can use parameters to control things um, in a kind of like parent to child relationship. Well, what if I want to change things in a child to parent relationship, right? So let's say, for example, I've got a movie file in. So I've got this um, banana. Excellent. 
And if I look at its resolution, examine its info, I can see it's 1280 by 720. All right, so I would like the banana's resolution to control the parent, right? Because if I, let's say that I take a look at the edge of this, and let's transform this bad boy. Ay ay ay! It would help if I could spell today. Um, we're going to transform this, and we'll spin it around in a circle. And then we're going to send that to an out. Ay ay ay! I can see that my uh, aspect ratio is all messed up here, right? So this is like squashed and not the right shape. And that's because this thing's parameters on its layout, see, it's got a height and width of 400, whereas the thing inside actually has a height and width of 1280 uh, by 720. Where's my info? And we can see this maybe most specifically if we view. So I'm going to view my banana right here. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to view my container. So we can see that there's a discrepancy in the size of these things. And if I want my container to be the size and aspect ratio of what's inside of it, then the way that I can change that is that I need to ask for the uh, height and width of my children. right? So in this case, I'm going to ask for the operator that is inside of me, right, or inside of this particular container called movie, movie, file, in, one. And I want the parameter called width. Nope, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> uh, parameter. So I want this thing, uh, this parameter called width, well, I made a mistake there, right? Because this doesn't actually have a parameter called width. It just has a, um, a quality that's its width. It has a whole uh, definition of width. And so I actually, in this case, don't need this thing called par, because I'm not asking for a parameter. I'm just asking for this thing's width. Uh, and similarly, here for the height, I'm going to do the same thing. I want inside of me the thing called movie file in one dot width. Well, actually, for this one, I want height. Okay. So now, if I view this, I see that there's the thing coming out of this. And if I view my original, all right. So now I have things that are the same size. That also means that if I change this movie file, Right, so if I were to change to something that was a smaller resolution, like this butterfly, I would see that my resolution here has changed. It's maintaining my aspect ratio. It's doing everything that I want. Now, I might, right, in some circumstances, I might be doing a couple things here in my network where actually this thing's width is not what I want because I'm actually going to compose something in an interesting or different way. And so in that case, what I really want is I want the last operator in the chain. I want the out one's width. So let's go ahead and change this. And I'm going to ask for the operator called out1, its width, and then this thing's out1's height. And you say, well, Matt, nothing changed there. Well, that's an excellent point, because I might have something like a fit top. Right? So I'm actually going to go ahead and plug this thing into the fit top. And a fit top is uh, an operator that lets me control a couple things about the size um, of my canvas, right? So here in my fit, I can see uh, that I've asked to fit best. I can ask for it to be its native resolution um, because my fit top here is actually, if I look at its size, it's 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. And I could, for example, decide that I want 1920 by 1080, right? So now my fit is uh, composing or compositing my uh, butterfly here inside of 
the kind of like dimensions and aspect ratio that I want. And it's kind of placing it inside of that thing. And we can see that I'm actually clipping when I translate off the edge here. And so to fix that, let's go ahead and scale this down just a little bit. There we go. Now my whole image doesn't get any clipping when it runs off the edge of that raster. Cool. So now this means that this container, right, its width and height is actually driven by the last thing in the chain here inside of it. And that's a different kind of operation, right, because that means that the, the media or the changes that I make inside of the network are then controlling my container. Whereas in this example, my container, right, is controlling the children. And it's an important distinction to be able to know when these two differences exist and to be able to choose when you want one of those uh, and when you want a different one, right? Um, because those have very different functions for us. Now, what's interesting for us is that if we look at the example of uh, our container over here, so let's go ahead and turn uh, this thing's height and width off. So we'll go ahead and give it some silly aspect ratio like, uh, I don't know, let's make it 50 pixels by 50 pixels. So it's a square and it's really grainy. If we actually view it, we can see that it's minuscule, right? It's this little itty bitty thing that I can hardly see at all. But if I attach a null, right, to the end of this, I'm getting something that's actually uh, this 1920 by 1080 image. So what gives? What's going on? Well, what's coming out of here is everything that I have inside, right? So I'm actually going to get this thing out of it, even if the display on this particular um, operator, this particular container, is a different resolution. And that might seem a little bit confusing, but as we talk more about how these things are control panels and how we can use them as control panels, we'll begin to see why that matters and how that could be interesting. All right, so that's just one thing that I wanted to clear up for us, the kind of difference between uh, driving something height, something or a, a container's height and width based on its children, right? I'm asking for something inside of this network to uh, control its height and width versus using the height and width of the container itself to alter what's inside of the network. And those are some important differences uh, to kind of think about in terms of how we're composing things um, and when we might use those two different techniques. All right, thanks everyone. Good work so far.